So what I'd like to do now is introduce to you um, another technique that I have in my little medicine pouch, which is the essential oil world. Now the essential oil world, I could go on a long time about it, but I won't. I would like to hopefully think that a person um, interested in this video will continue education with me, um, extended education with me on in the world of energy medicine as well as essential oils. So in the beginning of this process, what we'd like to do, I've, I've got her very balanced and calm right now, but for all intents and purposes, this therapy starts off with peace and calming. Now, peace and calming is an essential oil made by Young Living, and it does exactly that. It, it's peaceful, it's calming, it's aromatherapy that is very, very nice and balanced. Um, I introduce this to the horse. Just maybe a couple of drops in your hand. In a circular motion with your right hand, and you just diffuse it into your hand like this. And when you're introducing oils to a, an animal, you want to stay a little farther away. You don't want to impose on them a smell that they might really dislike, okay? Now, the peace and calming can be introduced this way as the essential oil that's in my hand right now. I rub it, it smells great, it's, it's kind of citrusy. Um, and I'll put it out to her like this. And she can smell it here. Their olfactory systems are huge. Now she has the option to come in and, oh yes. She has the option to come in and smell it, lick it, or not. Pretty good, huh, Crystal? Good girl. Okay. You do not, when using essential oils, force it on them. You also do not put, put it on their nose. Can you imagine having a smell <clears throat> on your nose that you can't wash off, you can't get off, you can't rub off anywhere? It'll sit there because it is an oil and it will sit there on your nose for hours. So you never want to impose that on an animal because it, it, it can create frustration, and especially if they don't like it particularly. And if they come to you and they say, oh, wow, yeah, I like this, this is cool, and, and she comes into it, great. So here we are, we're, we're now gonna move into the back, and we're gonna do the raindrop therapy on the back. What I will do before I start using the essential oils is I will make like a little valley of water, or excuse me, oil right here before I put on my essential oil. Some of these essential oils can be a little warm, so we want to make sure that we don't add any discomfort to the horse or to the person. A person, a person will tell you, but pretty much you have to read their body language, these guys. Um, if there is any little fuzzing from their hair, there, there might be a reaction from an oil. Um, Again, you remedy that with oil only. You do not use water. Water is a driver and it will drive the oils farther into the body. Um, so again, you calm that situation with oil and oil only. Now in using the essential oils, you have to be very mindful of not touching your eyes or their eyes. Um, these oils can, be, can really burn. Um, you also don't put water in your eye to flush your eye if you put an essential oil in it because it will drive it into your eye farther. Once again, you pour some oil in there. I know it sounds kind of weird, but it will re remedy it. It will stop the oil from burning and eventually it will come out. So be mindful when you're playing with the oils. Wipe your hands occasionally and just be extra safe when you're working with the oils for your eyes. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my almond oil and I, and I use my almond oil throughout this whole process. So there's no switching of oils. I've, I've introduced the V6, which is mentioned in Young's, Young Living's process. However, um, however, my choice is sweet almond. Sweet, al sweet almond oil goes into all of my 
well, every one of my body products that I make, my healing salves, etc. cetera. Um, it's an all over great, good oil and it's a carrier oil. So here we go. Okay, so here we, here we are making like a little valley of oil, okay. She doesn't usually have a reaction to these oils, but I just want to make sure that you see the valley. And she will be moving, it's typical. She's been quite patient through this whole process. All right, so hopefully you can see this nice little slick spot here that we've got. So here we are, we're starting off with the oregano. About six inches off of the, off of the body is where we're gonna drop these oils. And like three, she's little. A bigger horse, I'd say four. Now here's time. Here's basil. Now along here, after the basil, we're going to do a technique called a feathering technique. This feathering technique goes in stages. We do a three inch, a six inch, and a 12. So I'm going to start with the three. It's great to have helper, um, especially when you're working on a larger horse. Um, you can have an assistant on one side and therefore you're on the other side and it makes for a really nice in sync combination of working with the animal. I'm going to do my best to be two people. So with Crystal I can because she's little. So hopefully this will all work just great. So in the three inch, here we go. One, two, three. Everything's in the numbers three. One, two, 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 three. We don't work on the spine. We're on the side of the spine. Again, one, two, three. Two, three. One, two, three. Three, one, two, three. This is a light motion. Three, one, two, three. Now we're going to do our six inch. One, two, three. 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 Again. I'm going to go down like this. There you go. Okay, and now we're going to do what is called the organ feathering. Organ feathering is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Again, one, two, 